Hello and welcome to This Week in Destiny for the seventh week of Season 19, Season of the Seraph, commencing January 17th, 2023. Kicking things off this week with our Legacy rotation, we have the Loot rotation for Dares of Eternity, which will be on Week 3's rotation with the Scatterhorn armor set and Lightkin armor set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Chroma Rush Rapid Fire Frame Auto Rifle, the Ignition Code Lightweight Frame Grenade Launcher, the Grid Skipper Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle, the Lightweight Frame Sidearm Farewell, the Sonja's Tail Pinpoint Slug Frame Shotgun, the Shattered Scyther Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun, the Main Ingredient Precision Frame Fusion Rifle, the Long Shadow Adaptive Frame Sniper Rifle, the Last Dance Omelon Adaptive Frame Sidearm, the Toil and Trouble Aggressive Frame Shotgun, the Wishbringer Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun, and the Last Pedition Adaptive Frame Pulse Rifle. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. On Europa this week, Praxix the Technocrat will be the Empire Hunt, Cadmus Ridge will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Safeguard. On the Moon, the weekly story mission should be In the Deep. The Trove Guardian is located in the Hellmouth, the Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Zortal in Sorrow's Harbour. The Nightmare Hunt this week should be Tanix, Isolation, Zydron, Servitude, and Gaul, Rage. The Dreaming City this week is at a strong curse level, which means Pet Revenge can be found in Rhea Sylvia, and has the Dark Monastery mission for the next week. The Blind Well features Taken Enemies and the Plague Inomina, with the Ourobora being the Ascendant Challenge, located over in Aphelion's Rest Lost Sector. In addition, the weekly Throne World reset also refreshes the pinnacle drops for the Wellspring activity, Preservation mission, and the Vox Obscura replayable exotic mission. Plus, the new exotic mission, Operation Seraph Shield, in the helm. The Witch Queen weekly story mission is the Ritual, where the modifier is Fire Pit, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the third encounter, Golgoroth, called Gazer Maze. The Gaze Holder must stand in the Pool of Unclaimed Light when swapping the Gaze. The Vow of the Disciple challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Rourke, called Looping Catalyst. This is where Guardians must not lose the Leeching Force before the damage phase. The Vault of Glass challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Gatekeeper, called Strangers in Time. Players must defeat the Praetorians and Wyverns at the same time. The Deepstone Crypt challenge this week is the second encounter, Atrax 1, called Copies of Copies, where you must not send any Atrax 1 replicant debuffs into airlock slash space. The Last Wish challenge this week is the third encounter, Morgoth, called Forever Fight. Players must not kill the small ogres during the encounter. Your pinnacle raid will be the Garden of Salvation over on the moon, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Embrace, called To the Top. This is where you must not kill the Cyclopses that spawn near the Consecrated Mind. The second encounter, Spy Defense, called A Link to the Chain. This is where all Guardians must receive the Enlightened buff at the same time. The third encounter, Consecrated Mind, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cyclopses in the first two rooms. And the fourth encounter, Sanctified Mind, called Zero to One Hundred where you must fully fill each Conflux with 30 moats within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of moats. And the pinnacle dungeon for this week will be the Pit of Heresy on the Moon. Next up, challenges. So for week 7, the challenges available in the database are as follows. More than a weapon 7. Complete week 7 of more than a weapon. Defeat 5 Hive and Fallen bosses anywhere in the system. Bonus progress for defeating them in Heist Battlegrounds and the exotic mission Operation Seraph Shield for an Exoframe module and Challenge XP++. Heist Battlegrounds 6. In Heist Battlegrounds playlists, complete 35 heists and defeat 200 combatants with Season of the Seraph or Ikelos weapons for an Exoframe module and Challenge XP++. Legendary Heist. Complete a Heist Battlegrounds on Legend difficulty for Challenge XP+. Seasonal Shaping 2. Earn 10 levels with Shaped Seasonal or Icalos version 1.0.3 weapons for Challenge XP+. Down to size. Defeat 100 targets with Trace Rifles 
60 with glaives, and 30 linear fusion rifles in Gambit. Bonus progress will be awarded for defeating invading guardians. This will award challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Fleeting Glory. Complete crucible matches in the competitive playlist. Earn bonus progress for wins. This will award challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. And Grandmaster. Complete any Nightfall Strike on Grandmaster for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Speaking of Bright Dust, we have our Eververse for the week of January 17th, 2023. Available this week for Bright Dust, we have the Origami Crane Exotic Emote for 3,250 Bright Dust. The Taurus Rocketeer Exotic Ship for 2,000 Bright Dust. The Subjugator Entrance in Legendary Transmat Effect for 450 Bright Dust. The Festive Sparks Exotic Emote for 3,250 Bright Dust. The Jubilant Decree Legendary Emote for 700 Bright Dust. The Lampion Exotic Ghost Shell for 2,850 Bright Dust. The Taurus Firecracker Exotic Sparrow for 2,500 Bright Dust. The Lunar Growl Exotic Ship for 2,000 Bright Dust. The Tyrant's Vision Exotic Weapon Ornament for the Eyes of Tomorrow Rocket Launcher for 1,250 Bright Dust. And finally, the Lunar Tiger Legendary Ghost Projection for 1,500 Bright Dust. Hello. As a reminder, your daily Legendary Lost Sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of champions and burns you will find inside. But if you are new to the game or you are using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Tuesday, January 17th will be Chamber of Starlight on the Dreaming City for exotic boots, Solar and Void Elemental Shields, Solar Burn with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, January 18th will be the Affilians Rest on the Dreaming City for exotic gauntlets, Void Elemental Shields, Stasis Burn with Unstoppable and Overload Champions. Thursday, January 19th will be the K1 Logistics on the Moon for exotic chests, Solar and Arc Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Friday, January 20th will be the K1 Crew Quarters on the Moon for exotic helmets, Solar Elemental Shields, Arc Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Saturday, January 21st will be the K1 Revelations on the Moon for exotic boots, Arc Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. Sunday, January 22nd will be the K1 Communion on the Moon for exotic gauntlets, Solar and Void Elemental Shields with a Solar Burn, Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, January 23rd will be the Bunker E15 on Europa for exotic chests, Void Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Lead the way. Our first featured Grandmaster Nightfall will see us face off against Cargan in the Insight Terminus over on Nessus, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 100k or more. This Nightfall is a free-to-play Nightfall. You will be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept mods. The higher the difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with Ascendant Shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 5 Barrier and 3 Unstoppable Champions, with 2 Arc and 15 Void Shields. Masters and GMs will have 10 Barrier and 4 Unstoppable, with 7 Void Shields. The Champions will be Barrier Colossi, Barrier Hobgoblin and Unstoppable Incendiaries. Minotaurs and Incendiaries will have Void Shields. Your Nightfall modifiers will be Champion's Foe. You will face Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. You can either use Intrinsic Exotics or equip Anti-Champion mods to your Arm Armor to defeat them. These mods come from the Seasonal Artifact. Extra Shields. Legend modifiers include all previous modifiers. Equipment Locked. You will not be able to change your equipment after this activity starts. Pestilence. When defeated, Scions spawn Void Grenades at their feet. Match Game. Enemy Shields are highly resistant to all unmatched elemental damage. Acute Void Burn. Plus 25% Void Damage dealt and plus 50% Void Damage received. Ashes to Ashes. Dealing damage with a solar weapon now applies Scorch to your target, but your foes also now apply Scorch to you when they are dealing solar or explosive damage. Master Modifiers include all previous modifiers. Champions Mob. This mode contains additional champions. 
togetherness, base health regen is reduced. If near another player, health regen is increased. And Grandmaster modifiers. Chafe, radar is disabled. Limited revives. Gain additional revives by defeating champions. Extinguish. If your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Join in progress is disabled. Cargan stratagem. Incoming void and environmental damage is increased. The Grandmaster modifiers do not include pestilence, togetherness, and ashes to ashes. Your anti champion artifact mods for this week's Nightfall are anti barrier bow and pulse for one energy, unstoppable hand cannon for one energy, grenade launcher for seven, and low entropy superconductor, where stasis and arc melee abilities stun unstoppable champions for one energy. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti-barrier, the kinetic bow Wishenda, the kinetic linear fusion rifle Arvalist, the new kinetic pulse rifle Revision Zero, the solar energy hand cannon Ariana's Vow, the solar heavy sword the Lament, and the Titan exotic gauntlet Second Chance, which gain a second charge of your shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. And for unstoppable, the kinetic fusion rifle Bastion the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet's Athras Embrace, which have a chance to stun unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The Nightfall featured weapon will be the solo aggressive frame shotgun, Mindbender's Ambition. The Mindbender's Ambition is an aggressive frame kinetic shotgun with a base impact of 80, base range and stability of 29, it can roll with Swashbuckler, 1-2 punch, well-rounded and incandescent, with auto-loading holster, pugilist, snapshot sights and threat detector. It has the origin trait of stunning recovery where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen and you have improved recover for a short duration. And Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with the weapon grant a small amount of health. Delightful! And finally, Lord Shax brings Mayhem to the featured Crucible playlist for the seventh week of the season. Mayhem is where two teams of six players go head to head in a clash type mode. With a time limit of 10 minutes, the first team to get 125 eliminations is the winner. Abilities and supers charge at an extremely fast rate. Respawns are instant, and power ammo spawns are also much faster than usual. Plus, don't forget Saint 14 returns at the weekend for Trials of Osiris. As a reminder, Trials of Osiris is a 3v3 PvP high stakes variant of elimination. Only available from Friday reset until Tuesday weekly reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armour. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris would have all of their games tracked through a passage card, a ticket purchased from Saint 14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in trials will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, master mode materials, and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of seven games won and no losses. Five round wins will bag you that match for your passage card. By competing in trials, you do have a chance to pick up two pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning seven games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. That is amazing. Before we go, we have a few more things to go over for next week. Double rewards return to the Nightfalls this week, so if you want more of the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, and ascendant shards, then this would be a good week to get farming and stocking up for Nightfall. Also, don't forget the annual Moment of Trance are still active in-game, where you can earn in-game and Bungie Store rewards. Guardian down. And that's it for our seventh week of Season of the Seraph. Thank you very much for watching. Allons-y! Oh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.